Welcome back to another episode of No BS Woodworking, where there's no fluff, no sponsors, and of course, no BS. Today, we're 100 miles north of the shop in San Luis Obispo at Hardwoods, Inc., and we're gonna tell you how to go to the lumber yard. Now, when we first get started, right, in furniture making, we just go to the big box store, because that's all we're the only place we know that sells wood, but there's a better place out there that sells wood at a fraction of the cost. I'm talking a fraction of the cost, but to be able to go there and have a good experience and get good results, you do need to know a little bit before you show up. So today we brought a set of plans with us so I can show you actually how I plan for a project and actually how I buy the wood. And we're gonna walk you through all the definitions and, and how to show up because these places, they're really not retail friendly. They service the professionals. They service contractors. As you can see, there's massive, massive stacks of hardwoods, plywoods and sheet goods and things like that. And so when you show up here, they, they've got bigger fish to fry. So you wanna come in with a little bit of knowledge so you can have a good experience and make sure that you, you really get the best pricing and best boards. So let's head over to the stacks. I'm gonna show you some things. This is the biggest piece of walnut I've ever seen. Before you head out to the lumberyard, there's a few things you need and a few things you need to do. First of all, you need to call around and find a hardwood dealer. Now, a lot of times you may not have one right in your town, but there's gonna be one in your general area. Like I said, we're hundred miles away from our shop. I love coming here because the pricing is fantastic and the selection is robust but you may want to call around and get pricing on the wood that you want. And that's a commodity, so that price may change week to week, but it's important to call around and find a price that you like. A lot of times, hardwood dealers have other things that are great, like sheet goods, different veneered sheet goods. They have tons of selections that are way more than a big box store. And then when you head out to the lumberyard, uh, a few things you're definitely gonna need, a pair of gloves, a tape measure, of course you're gonna need a pen, and then a notebook is gonna be really beneficial. I'm gonna show you how to calculate board foot using a real set of plans. We're gonna estimate what we need for this project. Then I'm gonna go through the selection process and show you exactly how to select what you need. All right, this is a set of plans that we sell that benefit our charity, the Katz Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. What we've done is we've created a parts list for you where you can calculate the board footage you need. We have two wood species here. We're gonna be using maple and walnut, and I've already calculated how much of each we need. The formula for a board foot is a square that is 12 inches by 12 inches by one inches thick. So the way you figure that out, because a board can be any size, it doesn't come looking like that, is thickness in inches times width in inches times length in feet divided by 12 equals board feet. Now we have a great calculator over on our website that looks like this and it's gonna help you calculate this so you don't have to worry about it. In fact, it even allows you to put in the price so that way you can calculate exactly how much it costs without having to sit there and figure it all out with your calculator. So I have calculated before arriving at the lumber store that I'm gonna need 3.33 board feet in walnut. Now that is the actual board feet I need plus 25%. I like to add 25% because you're gonna lose waste to your jointer, planer, and table saw. So it's important that you're really accounting for that so you don't have to drive back for one board, which can actually get really expensive if you just need a little bit of wood. So 3.33 board feet of walnut with 25% overage, 7.5 board feet of maple with 25% over. Now eight quarter, which is two inches thick, we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, is $13.75 at Hardwoods Inc. here in Slow. So our total price for that comes out to 45.78. Hard maple, eight quarter, which is two inches thick, comes in at $4.89 a board foot. We need seven and a half board feet. That is again with that extra 25% comes out to 36.68 for a total project cost of 82.46. However, that's a little misleading because don't be surprised when you show up that the board you need is much longer than you need and is much more than 3.33 feet. So if you're doing a small project like this and you're coming down to the lumber yard, expect that you're probably gonna pay more than that. You're gonna get a lot more than you need. So let's head over to the stack. We're gonna expand on some of these principles a little bit more and we're gonna talk about how we select the lumber. This is where it really pays to be just a little bit informed. You can help them help you. So lumber comes in a variety of grades and sizes and they all have different codes and this is good stuff to know. So we have rough lumber here and then we have surfaced on one side which is S1S and then we have surfaced on three sides. So that means we have two parallel sides and one straight line ripped edge. That's S3S. Now, when you typically go to the big box store, this is why it is so expensive. It's S4S, and that's crazy, because you don't need that, especially if you own any tools like a table saw and a planer, you can get away with getting S2S or rough lumber. It's important to know the tools you have so you know what lumber you're gonna be able to handle. So, you know, I can handle rough lumber because I have a big jointer, a big planer, and a table saw, and so I always buy rough lumber, but, you know, if you're just getting started, 
garden, you just have a table saw and a planer, you might want to buy something that is uh, R1E, ripped on one edge, and then you can run it through a planer. It's also sold in a quarter system, and this is where people, especially beginners, get real confused, because this rough lumber here, it's two inches thick, but that's called eight quarter at the lumber store. It's eight quarter inches. And now when it's in its rough state, it hasn't been planed, they're gonna sell you the full two inches. But when you get down to six quarters, it's been planed on one side, that's inch and a half, six one quarter inches. You may be losing a little bit and maybe one in seven sixteenths. You get down to the one inch thick, four quarters, that's only gonna be 13 sixteenths thick. It's surfaced on two sides and ripped down one edge. That's the most expensive way to buy it. This is the cheapest, but it actually may save you a ton of time because you don't have the right tools for rough lumber. So it's important to know the tools and what kind of lumber you want. And then you can go through the stacks and pick out the right kind of cuts. So now you've figured out the grading of wood you're gonna buy. Now what type of wood are you gonna buy and what is it gonna look like? There's three basic types of wood. There's flat sawn, there's riff sawn, and quarter sawn. And they all look different on their edges and faces. And there's an easy way to tell by looking at the end grain. Now the least expensive is flat sawn. It's straight across the wood, sort of like a slab. It's gonna want a cup like a smile. And you're gonna get those cathedral patterns on the wood. Then you have Riffson. Riffson is going to have end grain that is diagonal, and that's gonna have four sides that all look the same, that are gonna have pretty straight grain. It's pretty sought after for legs, especially because no matter which way you look at it, you're gonna get the same look along the leg. Quarter sawn is the most expensive. I'm sure you've heard of quarter sawn white oak, and lumber yards will always separate quarter sawn from the rest of the white oak because it is so cool looking and so sought after. Now, it is gonna have both faces are gonna be straight grained and the edges are gonna be the cathedrals. But with quarter sawn, you're gonna sometimes see the medullary rays. Medulla, <laughs> probably not saying that right, is what brings nutrients out through the tree from the center, from the pith. And so those come out, I have a couple examples here I can show you exactly what all these things look like, but they look really cool. So this is where wood selection becomes key because a lot of times you're gonna have a board that is uh, half rift and half flat sawn. So for example, if you look at this board, you can see these growth rings, they look like a small or a rainbow, uh, that's gonna be your flat sawn wood. And then you see these are diagonal, that's riff sawn wood, and that's where you're gonna get those straight grains. So when you're planning your piece of furniture, you may want to pull different parts out of different pieces of a board. Now here is a board that is an extreme example of flat sawn white oak. Uh, you can see the grain runs straight up and down, and then check out these medullary rays here. So when you look at the faces of a flats on board, one that is sawn just across the log, you're gonna get these cathedrals. So they're gonna look a little different in different species. I'm a big fan of ones in walnut, maybe not other ones. This is white oak, and you know it looks good, but it may not be what you want for your furniture. And then when you get over here, this is what riffs on faces are, look, are gonna look like. They're also gonna look like this on the edge, which is why a lot of times people use these for legs. They'll laminate two pieces of riffs on together or they'll use a big eight quarter chunk of it. Then when you get into flats on, these are, this is an extreme example. They don't all have medullary rays like this, but this looks really, really cool. And this is gonna have the cathedrals on the edges. It's hard to see here. Uh, you can kind of see on this edge, you have the cathedrals going like this, but that's it. That's the three basic types you're gonna get in the lumber store. And you need to decide what you want the faces and edges of your project to look like when you're selecting your lumber. So now that we know all the definitions, how wood is graded, how it's measured, it's time to select our wood for our project. Now I've selected this board because it has this really crazy knot grain pattern in the middle of it, which is actually gonna look a lot like the mocks and vice I made a couple years ago. I think shop furniture should be beautiful and unique. I really like a crazy grain pattern that is visible. However, this is a big board and you don't have the options of buying shorter when you go to a place like this. Occasionally a place will let you cut a little bit out of it, but that's not always very common. So we're gonna put this into our board foot calculator, which by the way, does both metric and imperial. We've got a two inch thick board that is eight inches wide by 10 feet long. So it's 120 inches long. There were some eight foot boards in the stack here and I might go back and choose something else, but that comes out to 13.33 board feet. You can put the cost in our calculator. So $13.75 comes out to a total price of 183.33. Now, originally in the beginning with 25% overage, we calculated that we needed $45.78 worth of walnut, 3.33 board feet. So when you're buying something like this, you wanna make sure that the scrap, the fall that you're gonna have is gonna work for other projects. Uh, or maybe some, if you're doing something small like this, dig through the scrap pile. But when you're doing building bigger furniture, this is how you go through it. And this is how you find the boards and this is how you calculate how much it would cost before you ever get to the register. So there's no surprises. And if you have questions, you can help them help you because you know what you're looking for. And a lot of times if you come in and you're like, I want riffs on white oak, 
it needs to be minimum six inches wide, eight feet long. What do you have? They'll take you through and show you where that is. Other great places to get hardwood, make sure you're checking Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. A lot of times, you know, somebody may have had a woodworker in the family in the past. So they got a big stack of uh, lumber sitting in the garage they're trying to get rid of. You can get it real cheap and there's lots of ways to find deals. But the lumber yard is the most cost effective way to buy places. So Google hardwood dealers in my area, do your research, plan ahead, and you're gonna do really well and you're gonna be received really well in these places that are typically serving high dollar volume customers like contractors, finished carpenters, people who build doors, things like that. We actually helped a guy select a bunch of Sapili. He was building a ton of exterior doors, really cool guy. With this video, you should be armed with the tools you need to go down to the lumberyard and have a really good experience and walk away with things that are really gonna turn out beautiful in your garage or your shop. So guys, thanks for watching. I love doing these no BS videos and they are supported entirely by people heading over to camtools.com. We do not do sponsors, but we do not do that on this channel. And so we can bring you non-biased, honest, no BS information. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.